Hi everyone, it's Andy from Hobby Headquarters. Well, I've got an exciting new kit to share and build with you guys today. This is a box that just came from the Postman. It was EMS from South Korea. And inside this box is Academy Models brand new 35th scale Panzer IV H. It is all brand new tooling, complete state of the art. In fact, it is so new, uh, there is no box available for it yet. In fact, this is how it came, just the, the sprues were put inside here. We have photocopies of the instructions. And as you can see, this picture right here is what will represent the box art when it finally does come out. Now, I've been told by Academy probably to expect these kits sometime in January, maybe even late February, or excuse me, early February on that. I was looking inside, uh, there's a decent amount of parts in there too. There's about nine sprues inside the entire kit. Now, every Panzer IV that I've ever seen has all had Zimmerit on it. And what Academy has done on this is they have con uh, contracted out with deaf models and they have made three-dimensional decals of Zimmerit. They look very, very nice. You'll see all that stuff in a few minutes there when I break apart the kit for you. But they are regular water slide decals that will represent uh, Zimmerit. So excited to try those out, something different on it. Maybe it'll be a little bit easier than some of the stickers that have been coming out. Because sometimes the stickers are a little bit hard to place exactly and if they stick, you can't move them again. At least the decal hopefully will give us a little bit more leeway with that. So, very excited about building this kit. So, let's get started on it. Okay, we're going to start off. Uh, first of all, I'm going to show you there's quite a few sprues in this particular kit and the first one we're going to look at is the wheel sprue and one thing I'll immediately point out to you and I've shown you on a few other companies too that are doing this too they're hollowing out the uh, the letter on the sprue and making us for our modelers it makes it stick out a lot better too so we can easily see it so the, right off the top I love that they've done that now the wheel sprue is actually four sprues total of the exact same sprue, just uh, the H sprue, just repeated over and over again. And it's primarily to give you all the road wheels, of course, and a few of the other parts. But then you end up with quite a few idlers and drive sprockets, transmission covers, all these other extra parts. So there's quite a few extra parts that you'll end up with with those four sprues. Then we have right here, we have our uh, skirt for the, for the turret and our barrel. Barrel is one piece, not slide molded, but the, uh, the muzzle brake is on a, uh, another piece. So we'll take a look at that in a minute. And some more of the fenders. And you can see they give you quite a few different options right here. This is the, uh, the top plates here. So you get three different versions for that. The chassis itself, this is a huge sprue for Academy. I usually don't see them this large. The, the chassis itself is made up of multiple parts, but if it's like the, uh, the M1 Abrams that we built too, it, everything fit together really, really well on that. And as you can see, multiple different pieces for the uh, front cover here. It's very nice looking detailing. Same thing with the, you can do extra bolt-on armor. So all different types of uh, upgrades that you can do on this. And then we have this portion of it is all molded separately so your engine deck will come down off of that parts of the turret and here is the cupola and that's molded as one big round piece and I like when they do things like that and finally the last sprue is going to be your side skirts some of the the railings for it and some of the tools things like that on it so those all look to be pretty nice and this is the thing that I am the most excited about looking at this kit. And this is a sheet of decals. I'll turn it right side for you guys. This is Zimmerit decals. And I'm going to zoom in real close for you guys. And hopefully you can see there is quite a bit of texture. It is not a flat little surface. Hopefully it's showing up on film as good as it looks in, uh, in person here. And you can see there's quite a bit of big bumps as if when they drag the Zimmerit to put it on. So I'll be very anxious to try those out. I think those will look really good on it. And they're made by the company Def Model. So they're going outside uh, of Academy to have it done. And the same thing with the, the uh, decals, the regular decals, the numbers. And I like when they've given you stuff like this too. 
uh, you know, because a lot of times over the Zimmerit, you couldn't stencil it very easily. So a lot of times the crews would just use paintbrushes and just, you know, blot it on right there. And the numbers are, would never be perfect. So that is included. Almost forgot, too, we, uh, the tracks. The tracks are uh, some simple rubber bands here that uh, interlace together. Just like, well, actually the first way was right. And I believe they use regular glue. We'll find out when we get into the instructions. And this is the type of thing, too, that if you really want to do some major upgrading on this, you can always put the Fruel model tracks on it if you want to use the metal ones with a little sag. But a lot of guys, I know some of the guys just starting out, these, a lot of them, they appreciate this type of track because it's much easier to put together. Okay, we're going to start off uh, gluing the parts of the hull together. And as you can see here, it's not a bathtub style hull. So when they do that kind of stuff, they can get a lot more detail printed onto the side of these pieces. But we first have to go ahead and glue in all of the center supports. And I was dry fitting all of this just a few minutes ago and everything seems to fit very, very nice and tight. So we're going to let that set up for a few seconds and then we'll come back and start gluing the sides on and I'll show you how it all looks. Okay, I put just a touch of glue into the little sockets on the side here to get this all to start to line up. And as you can see, it just kind of clicked all right into place there. So now we'll run a little bead of cement down the inside. And as you can see, it's fitting together really nice. And I think that'll make up a nice little uh, chassis piece for us. Okay, you can see we're starting to glue the suspension into place here, all the different parts that make up this. But I'm going to show you on this side right here, I haven't done it yet, but hopefully you can see pretty well. There are a bunch of injection pin marks right here that you need to clean up first before you start attaching those pieces. Because once you get them on, it'll be really, really tough to sand around that. So take care of that first, which I'm going to do right now. And then we're also going to glue on your front plate. And you can see everything fits together pretty well here. So. A uh, little bit of glue and some clamping, and I think we'll have a really nice tight fit. So I've gone ahead and we've attached all of the road wheels, drive sprocket, return idler. The only thing I haven't done yet on that side is put the return rollers up on top. Uh, everything is actually just dry fitted into place, so we can do any individual painting, including these road wheels. They're uh, just press fitted into place, so they, they stick pretty well, so you'll be able to go back and paint those later. Now, the tracks. I've been messing around with those for a little while now, and regular modeling glue does not work on these at all. And honestly, it says use instant cement, super glue, and even that is not working that great on it too. It kind of flakes off. So I will try my best to get them together for the use of the video, but more than likely I would go ahead and probably just replace these with some kind of aftermarket track, like a Fruel track or something like that. So like I said, we'll get it for the video right now to work as best as possible, but probably do something different than that later on. Now we're going to go ahead and start assembling the upper part of the hull. And as you can see, there's quite a few different pieces that make up the hull here. and. Academy has given you quite a few optional pieces too. This piece, there's three different versions of this that you can put into place to change the different variants. And then you'll start attaching the front fenders and the, pl the front plate here with the machine gun ball and the uh, driver's vision port. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to glue all these together right now. We'll come back and we'll show you how it fits onto the lower hull. So we have the uh, the upper part of the hull put together here, and there's actually quite a few pieces that make up the different portions of it here, and it, it fits real well. There, It is a little fiddly getting some of these pieces to line up properly, so you just got to be kind of prepared that just do it a little by little, making sure that one part doesn't shift when you go to put the other part down. So now that uh, we have that, you can see this is fits really well right on top, just clicks into place. These fenders flare up just a little bit, but a little touch of glue on each side, and that'll, that'll knock those right down. Now that we have the upper hull and lower hull attached, we can start doing the, uh, the rear deck here, or rear back plate, I should say, and then all these other little pieces. Got to sand these up and put these on. So we'll work more on the, the back of the vehicle right now and actually glue the, 
the top of the hull to the lower hull too right now. Okay, now we're going to attach the upper and lower portion of the turret together. glue on that. We'll glue the other side in a minute there. Then we have our gun assembly. Now the gun is, uh, the, the barrel itself, excuse me, the muzzle is slide molded. The barrel is all one piece and just has a, a fine little seam to take out. But as you can see, the muzzle brake turns out really nicely. This is going to just plug into here once we get all those pieces glued up. And you'll notice that there is a little bit of like a recess in here, and that is because they give you the side plate armor with the doors. Actually, I got the wrong side there. That'll go on this side. Cool, just like that. And then you have the option of opening and closing the doors on it. Now, this is the name of this, uh, the game on this kit is there's lots of accessory pieces to give you a lot of different options. Now, the cupola here is in the open position with all the vision ports. So there's about 14 pieces that go into making this up, but they do give you the option if you want it open, close, just like when I was showing you some of the other pieces on the vehicle, quite a few different options on it. So that'll get placed in there. The turret bin will go right on the back here, and that too fits literally clicks right into place there. So now I'm going to go ahead and glue all these portions on and we'll come back and show you what it looks like. Okay, as you can see here, we have uh, most of the turret assembled and I've just begun to start gluing on the uh, brackets for the space for the skirt armor for the turret. And you can see there's a little bit of a parting line that we'll be taking out of those. But after we get all of that done, we can start going ahead and putting the the armor itself on and I was just dry fitting some of the pieces and very good fit they give you these nice little indentations too on here that really make it easy to line up and they're invisible once you actually get the actual armor on so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna finish up sending all the of uh, the parts of the turret down we'll get the uh, spaced armor put on and we'll move on to the next step Okay, as you guys can see, we've got the majority of the parts attached to the uh, the kit. Now, this is everything except any of the accessories like the uh, tools and all the other little stuff like that that might get in the way of putting the Zimmerit on. Now, as you can see, we have the Zimmerit decal. And there's no real instructions on here to speak of. So, I think it's going to get applied just like a regular decal. So, if we can see if we can get it to lay down. And you guys are watching it in the same one-to-one -one speed that I'm putting it on here, so. It seems to want to go down pretty good so far. Just a matter of getting it around all the little, little things that are popping up here. And it seems to fit pretty good too. So, it's looking like that this is not going to be that difficult after all. I was kind of a little bit worried. I mean, they look really nice. Now, obviously, I'm going to pat it down inside there. I'm going to let this dry a little bit, and then I will see if we need to put any of the uh, the mark fit on it to see if to get you know to wrap into the little nooks and crannies a little bit. So, we'll come back in a few minutes after this is dried, and we'll show you what it looks like. Okay, I'm laying down a few more of the uh, the decals. Uh, one thing I do like quite a bit about these over the stickers that are out is that the parts that are supposed to be hollowed out are hollowed out, like me getting this piece right around here. Normally, if that would have been a sticker, we'd have to be cutting that piece out. So, uh, so far the fit has been really good. The only problem I had was just a tiny little bit right around here. There's some little little brackets that stick up that were kind of in the way and you definitely have to use cotton swabs to push it in there found that if I was trying to push these in there it kept getting it to pop up but after a little manipulating with the cotton swabs it's starting to lay down pretty good now I am laying down mark fit strong hoping that it's just like a regular decal so far it has not damaged anything and it's appearing to, to stick fairly well so far so Hopefully this is uh, the stuff that they want you to use on it. Now, it might not even be regular decal at all. So, but we'll, 
keep going ahead and using the mark fit and see if we have any problems after it fully dries. And as you can see, I'm starting to do up around the turret too to see how that was working out. And so far, it's all doing pretty good. This is another little piece that I'm working on here. And these are the pieces that are going to cover the compound curves that stick up here. And they are scored so they wrap around. I'm not too sure how they're going to go around on the front here. We're using a little bit of Mark Fit to see if that softens it enough to get it to uh, want to wrap around that. Now I'm going to let that set up for, you know, like the five, ten minutes to see how it is. Then we'll go back over it with a cotton swab and kind of see if we can push it into the proper shape. And I'll let you know how that turns out. Okay, it's been a couple hours of playing around with the Zimmerit decals. And I can say I finally have them all into place. And as easy as I showed you putting this one on, some of the other ones were not at that easy. And I'll kind of show you what I'm talking about here, some of the problems that I ran into. They were all, all fixable, but just got something you should be aware about. I'm going to show you a real close-up of the Zimmer decal and you, the individual lines that make up this. A lot of times when you're going to pull these out of the water, if you start to slide it off the decal paper, it immediately wants to fold on one of those lines. And when it does finally fold all the way around, it is very, very difficult to get undone. I soaked them back in water and eventually you can get some of them to come apart. I ended up destroying one because it just would not let go of itself. So um, I was able to, they do give you a couple of other odds and end pieces that aren't required for this kit that I was able to cut up and make, you know, the actual decal for it or the Zimmerit for it. So I think it's going to turn out all right. Uh, it's one other thing I should also point out to you too when you're going to do it. Once again, show you the little piece. Each one of them has a little number printed on there. Cut that off before you're going to do it because inevitably that little piece will float on to the other part of the Zimmer right here and then you're struggling to get that piece off as well. So just some little tips on it. Now I did put a couple of coats of Mark Fit on and we were able to like in this area right here get it to wrap around that multiple curves. Uh, I probably am going to put one or two more coats just to make sure I'm going to let this fully dry overnight. And I'm thinking I probably will clear coat the entire model first just to seal in these decals before we do anything with the paint job. That way it'll hopefully protect the, the decals a little bit more. Now there's a few little areas too that you can see that like that, that little piece right there is just sticking out past the top. I found that if you take a, once it's fully dry, take your brand new uh, number 11 blade and if you come at it from this angle like this, and just kind of give a sawing motion, you can cut that little excess piece right off right there without any trouble. So we'll get some tweezers and pull off the excess on it. So if you do have any areas that kind of stick up just a little bit, uh, overall the decals are been cut really, really close to what you're supposed to get. There's only a couple little areas that I found them just to be a little bit off. Uh, one thing that they did an excellent job on was on the back here and a lot of these all have little, and actually this one's still not laid down yet, we just got done doing this one, but all these little bolts stick out of it and it was perfectly the way it lined up on that. So we'll get a little bit more mark fit on that, get that to lay down pretty well. Uh, so like I said, I do like these right here. It is definitely uh, different than doing the, st the stickers and probably a little bit easier than the stickers because the holes are already punched out for you. So. I will get this clear coated. We will come back and show you what it looks like and I'll have any other thoughts on what else you should do on something with these decals. So I let the decals dry overnight like I said and I've come back in the morning and I've added on a few of the last remaining parts to complete principal construction on the kit. And the only thing we've left off are some of the little small things like tools, things like that that we're going to paint separately on it. Then after we got all of that done, as you can see, we went over it with XF69 NATO Black, including the muffler here. The muffler we're going to rust separately, so that's why it's not attached, but we did want a nice black undercoat for it. And I also went ahead and painted up the side skirts. Now I plan on doing a little chipping effect on these, so we sprayed it with Tamiya's Fine Surface Primer, the Red Oxide Primer, the German Red Oxide Primer, so it's going to look really good as it chips through, and we'll, we'll beat those up a little bit. So overall, I, I think the decal works out pretty well. I'm, I'm pretty happy with it. It's got a nice, nice thickness. It's not too crazy. Uh, I would think it looks pretty good to scale. I mean, it's, 
it's kind of hard sometimes to see it in the black. I think once we get the dark yellow on it, we will really notice how it sticks out a little bit more and when you weather it as well. Overall, the kit went together really nicely. There are lots and lots of different variations that Academy gives you on this, whether it be the, you know different drive sprockets, different idler wheels, some other different components all over the kit. Clearly, they're going to make multiple Panzer IVs out of this down the road, so I'd definitely be looking for that kind of thing to come out. So I would, I would like I said, I would definitely recommend this kit. It, it goes together well. The fit is real tight. And this took me a grand total of about two and a half days of working on it to get it to this point. Now, we're not going to spend as much time on the weathering portion because it's very, very similar to it. I will show you the basics, what we're going to do to it, and, and then, of course, the final, how it looks once it's all done. So now that we have it at this point, we're going to go ahead and spray the entire model with XF60, des or excuse me, dark yellow. We're also going to spray a little hairspray on these first. Then we're going to spray these with the dark yellow, and what we're going to be able to do is chip off any of the excess paint with the hairspray on it. I'll show you a little bit more of that as we get to it. Okay, those are our side skirts painted up in the red oxide primer. Now we don't need to seal those at all because those are actually made out of lacquer paint. So now I'm just taking a, a can of women's hairspray and we're just gonna give it a quick little spritz over the top here. Not too, too heavy, but just like that, just to make sure everything is coated. And after that dries, I'm gonna put a second light coat on that and then we'll show you the painting process. Quickly, I thought I would show you the rusting technique we're going to use on the, the muffler. We start off by just putting kind of a liberal coat of enamel wash on it from MIG, the light rust. And then it's just a matter of taking just a little bit of the pigment powder. And this is going to make it look a little little grainy and flaky like dried rust would be and just using different variations in color I've got a couple of them out right here and we're just gonna blot over the existing stuff now I know it looks a certain way right now but when it dries you'll be really shocked to see how this starts to blend together and starts to look like a rusted piece of uh, equipment so we'll let that dry for a little while, show you that. We're also just gonna lightly do that on some of the spare tracks as well. Uh, these tracks are gonna represent something that have been sitting up on top of the vehicle for a while. In fact, Academy is kind of, it's kind of cool on this. These spare track links, if you can notice here, are half hollow horn and half solid horn. So to represent at this time in the war, a lot of these tanks were just using a variety of different parts and some of them had hollow horns, some of them had solid horns. So I think that'll make a nice little uh, little bit of detail for this. So we're gonna do the same thing for the tracks. Come back and we'll glue those on after all the paint job is done. Well, as you can see, I've jumped ahead a little bit on the construction of the vehicle here. We've completed our camouflage over the entire vehicle. And then we've sprayed the entire model with uh, TS-80, the flat coat. And now we're just going and attaching all of the decals that are going to go on there. And if you've built the Academy in the past, sometimes some of their decals have not stuck very well, but these do. I was just putting on some of these in the back here, and they're sticking very, very well on it. So after about, about four or five minutes, you can go ahead and taking a cotton swab and kind of tamp it into place and that'll get it to go inside the waves of the Zimmeret. And we might have to put a couple of coats of MarkFit on it, but you can already see it's starting to, uh, starting to really conform to the Zimmeret already. So very happy with the decals. Now, once we get the decals completely in place, we're gonna go ahead and start doing some more weathering on the vehicle. As you can see, and I'll show you down here, we started to pull off some of the chipping and some of the red oxide primer coming through. But we're also gonna do some more chips, which I started and I thought I better show you guys what I'm doing before I go any further, that are gonna be like more rusted and worn. But we'll beat all that stuff up after we put the, all the decals on and then we're gonna clear coat it one more time to seal all that in then we can do all of our paint job. I'm gonna take a paintbrush dipped in water and just start to rub it over lightly. And you can see that some of the red oxide primer starts to show through. And if you're interested in a little bit more in-depth video on doing the hairspray chipping, we have one from about a, about two years ago now, 
but it's with a Tiger Tank in winter camouflage and it does the exact same thing using the hairspray technique. It works really well for doing chipping effect. Okay, you saw me start to chip away some of the red oxide primer. Now we've uh, sealed that in now so no more can chip off. And now we're going to take a little bit of our brown chipping color, which I'll show you in the corner what the formula is for that. Taking a little piece of torn sponge, blotting a little bit on, and then taking the majority of the paint out of the sponge, patting it on just a paper towel. You want to take it and we can start putting some darker chips and scratches on, kind that have gone through a little bit more, starting on the bottom. And we're also going to do a few of the upper surfaces that don't have zimmerit on it. That would get a little wear and tear. The zimmerit, not being a metal, shouldn't have those kind of chips on it. So any of these, like the hangers in here, all of this stuff should be chipped up pretty well. As well as across some of the tops of the, uh, the turret. Now once your chipping dries, we're going to take a little light rust enamel wash. And we're going to start doing a few little puddles around areas that look like they should start to get rusted. And then taking our flat brush that's been dipped in enamel thinner. Start giving some little rust streaks. Takes a little bit of time too, but you'll blend all of this together to get it to the way you want it to be. So I'm going to work on the rest of the vehicle this way and we'll come back and show you what it looks like. Now we want to give a thin coat of streaking grime over the entire top here of the turret. Now the decals have been sealed in now. So we're just using a little dark streaking grime and just going to put a couple of tiny little dots up here on a wet surface. And we'll go around the entire vehicle and do that right now. And we're also going to use that same streaking grime mixed with some thinner and kind of go over all of the areas of the Zimmeret just lightly and then kind of streak it around. And that'll get a lot of the little pieces of Zimmeret to pop out. And the last little thing I'm going to show you guys is when you have rubber road wheels, how to get rid of the little bit of extra overspray. And all we're using here is a little, to me, a black panel liner. And just touching it up against the edge. And it usually just goes wicking right around and takes care of that problem. Well, here we go, guys. Here is our final completed model. And we'll first give you a little 360 view of the entire build before we talk about it a little further. Now I did do a few other little minor things on the weathering. We first of all weathered up the, the tracks using our typical Tamiya brown panel liner as well as a little Vallejo light sienna 
and then just lightly brushed it with a metallic color just on the edges of the tracks to, just to make them pop a little bit more. And then like I said, we did put a few extra little scratches and things along the side. And then finally, the last coat we did was XF57 Buff. Lightly sprayed over about 18 inches away and just to lightly mist over the entire tank just to give it a little bit of a, like a, of a dust effect to it. Just to kind of blend everything together. Now, overall, I think the build was actually very enjoyable. The, the few minor little things, the tracks, I did have a little bit of a trouble getting them to stick together to themselves. And even super glue was hard going wanting to stick together on that. Regular glue did not work at all. But with super glue and then a staple inside, we, we were able to... Uh, get a, a decent performance out of the track and like I was telling you earlier too if you wanted to switch them out you could get some Fruel model tracks uh, those would really really pep this up quite a bit here also the uh, the decals now the decals for the Zimmerit were were very good except for a few little areas we did have a little delamination of it and and it was just coming off on some of the edges and in fact what I can kind of show you back here is some of the delamination here and here. I finally just chipped the rest of it off and it actually kind of looks like Zimmerit damage. So you can kind of take a negative and kind of turn it into your, uh, to, a, to a better situation with it. So uh, overall, I would probably just on some of the edges if they start doing that again is maybe put a touch of super glue on the edge and then push it down and then re-weather over on it. But other than that, the kit fit together really well. There was lots and lots of different options for you to choose. And clearly, like I was telling you, I think there's multiple other versions of this kit coming out as well. So I want to thank you guys as always for watching and please stay tuned because we have many more videos coming.